Hi there, I'm Robert Martinez, state historian of New Mexico. This is New Mexico history in 10 minutes. Can we talk about the Colombian exchange? No, I don't mean a narco cocaine drug cartel. I'm talking about the exchange of foods and people, ideas and diseases that started in the late 1400s into the 1500s even up to today. Um, it's very interesting, it's fascinating, and it really reshaped the world. What started happening when Europeans started uh, coming to the Americas and colonizing in Africa and then going to Asia, all of a sudden was you started getting this vibrant mix of, well, everything. So first of all, Let's talk about food, okay? One of my favorite topics. When I taught high school, I used to ask my students to imagine a pepperoni pizza in front of them, okay? Now raise your hand if you like pepperoni pizza. Yeah, that's what I thought. I love it too. Well, the crust, um, that's wheat. That came from Europe. Cheese from cows, that came from Europe. Uh, pepperoni, pork, that came from Europe. But hold on, if you look into the pepperoni, it has that red, uh, oily, delicious flavor. That's a, a pimiento pepper. That came from the Americas. And what would pizza be without tomato sauce, okay? Without tomato sauce, what can you do? Uh, you have nothing. You have to have tomato sauce. Well, tomatoes came from the Americas. I mean... All you Italian people out there, can you imagine uh, spaghetti and meatballs without uh, red sauce, uh, Sunday sauce without tomatoes? Oh, come on, Madonna, that's uh, ridiculous, right? This is what happens. It changes our diets forever and in good ways. Um, in the Americas, you had things like um, chilies, okay, chili peppers in uh, Mexico, um, you can now find chili peppers in Chinese food. And what is Ireland without the potato? Um, Ireland and the potato are synonymous with each other, okay? Well, um, there were no potatoes in Ireland before the 1500s. So things were quite different there. Um, the Americas are changed. Uh, horses, pigs cows, goats, sheep. Uh, these animals are brought and they're, uh, some of them are beasts of burden, of course, but others uh, provide meat and milk and cheese uh, that were unknown to the native peoples of North America and South America. Um, so as you can see, foods change. Uh, what else? Well, um, you get corn, maize. Corn comes from the Native American peoples. Uh, corn is sent all over the world. What else do we get from uh, the Europeans? Wheat, barley, garlic, onions, apples, oranges. Think about that. Almonds are brought to the Americas. Um, peanuts are brought to uh, the rest of the world. So I just want you to think about that, how foods were uh, energized Diets changed, and this meant an increase in populations in many parts of the world. I mean, yes, there were things that cut back population, we'll get to that, but diet was really um, enhanced for everyone around the world. So I think um, the Colombian exchange, as far as food goes, has been pretty much a positive thing for everyone. I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, chocolate. Oh my gosh. Chocolato from the Aztecs, the Mexicans. Um, can you imagine France or Belgium without any chocolate? I love Belgian chocolate. It's fantastic. Swiss chocolate. Can you imagine that? Um, the, the world changed. Coffee, uh, was brought to the Americas, uh, first from Asia and the Middle East and then through Europe. So, Everything, everything was mixing and changing and creating the amazing uh, diets and food we have today. Now, how about peoples? Well, demographics really shifted radically with uh, the opening 
of uh, trade with the Americas, people moving back and forth, many because they had to, either because of economics or slavery, but also um, because of opportunities. So um, Native Americans were displaced, uh, Africans were uh, removed from their homeland and forced to live uh, in other parts of the world, never to see their homeland again. Europeans left because they had uh, nothing going for them at home. There was no work, there was no land, there was no opportunity. Um, this is the story of immigration, okay? And everybody has ancestors who have done this. It's in our nature to want to uh, trace our families back to uh, the richest, the best looking, the smartest, uh, the most noble ancestors. But um, all of these people were hard workers. They were immigrants in the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. It doesn't matter if they were from Spain or Portugal, Africa, um, England, Ireland, uh, France. These folks were the excess population for the most part. They wanted to go from a bad place to a better place. And so you see these folks coming. This creates a lot of um, economic and uh, demographic pressures on the Native American communities because these folks tended to go where there were already uh, people living, um, sometimes to put them to work by force or coercion, and also to have markets to sell goods and produce goods. So um, this is uh, mercantilism starting uh, with the age of discovery, the colonizers extracting goods uh, from uh, the conquered territories uh, and then taking it to another territory to manufacture products and then sell it back to the colony. This goes on and on and people are moving and shifting and immigration is happening everywhere. And people are mixing. They're mixing biologically. It's been happening forever, folks. Uh, it cannot be uh, explained away or avoided. Um, DNA tests are showing uh, just how vitally intermixed we all are. So there's that aspect of it, the human aspect. Uh, um, food, humans change. Uh, and then there's disease. Yes, there's disease. Uh, Europeans bring a lot of diseases to the Americas uh, that the native folks had never been exposed to. So they were incredibly vulnerable. Um, the Europeans didn't mean to do it. Uh, the Spaniards brought uh, all kinds of diseases. The British brought diseases. And this was a demographic disaster for Native America. Um, upwards of 80 to 90 percent of them were just wiped out. Um, accidental or not, we have to recognize that that was very difficult on them. And uh, we're still feeling the ramifications of this with uh, uh, poverty and uh, drug abuse, a rampant alcoholism, because it affects people psychologically. And it's not just them. It affects us. It impacts all of us, especially, especially those of us who are of mixed ancestry, because we descend from all those different people. So we have to keep this in our minds when we're thinking about uh, the Colombian exchange. Uh, think about that. What were the good things that came out of the Colombian exchange? And what were the not so good things? Uh, by the way, um, the Americas gave... Uh, the rest of the world, uh, syphilis. Uh, that was a disease that was uh, in the Americas uh, that was transmitted through intimate contact. And it was a disease that attacked the organs, especially the brain. And it was a, a, a devastating disease uh, when it reached uh, parts of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, and Asia as well. So these things go in all directions. Uh, the Colombian exchange is multidirectional, and it has affected and shaped all of us. Thank you. I hope you'll join me again. Hasta pronto. Bye-bye.